I meet with all the generations who are involved, all the, the, the key players in the leadership that are involved, talk about where the, the roadblocks are, try to be an open, as honest as we possibly can be. Then we'll look at the strategy, we'll look at the one-year strategy, so our 12 months, what's our map, our measurable action plan. Five years is what I would say is the maximum for any uh, prepare mode in, in successful succession planning. The following is brought to you by Thrive, the end-to-end -end client experience platform that helps you get the job, manage the job, and get credit. Hey, hey, this is Gordon Henry at Winning on Main Street. And this week we get to meet Stephen Short. Welcome, Stephen. Hi, Gordon, how are you? Great to see you. So brief intro on Stephen for our audience. Do you run a family business? Are you interested in passing your family business on to other members of your, of your family? Succession planning is a crucial aspect of a family business. It can only happen successfully when bold decisions are made and talent development is supported. That's where Stephen Short comes in. Stephen is a succession planning coach, strategy facilitator, team development coach, leadership coach, and personality profiler. Stephen grew up in two family businesses. We're going to hear more about that and learned a lot about succession planning while making some mistakes along the way. Stephen's mission is to help you build a killer family business without killing your family. Listen in to learn about the five Ps of succession planning, purpose, pick, prepare, promote, and patience to do it successfully. We'll also learn about understanding how things change so you can go from the hero of your story to the mentor of the next generation story. Very interesting stuff. And also, you can go to his website for a free 30-minute chat to see if he is a fit for you. So, Stephen, let's get started. I mean, you, you've given probably the most succinct uh, <laughs> synopsis of what I do. So, I think this is the end of the podcast. That's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for that. Well, let's let's talk about uh, your beginnings, your background, and the two family businesses you worked in. Uh, yeah, so we started, I mean, I say we, I was like five at the time, but still, uh, we started the first business, which was uh, psychometrics, we did personality profiling, we do career guidance, we do interview skills, we do selection for companies based on uh, aptitudes and personality. Then uh, a couple of years later, my folks started a, an English language school, uh, teaching English to foreign students so in the US, you call it an ESL school, English as a second language. Uh, that for me was more appealing because I didn't really have the, the corporate world uh, idea and the things that we were doing at the time with selection. Uh, and I got to travel uh, immensely around the world, visiting about, I don't know, about 45 different countries for work. Um, so that was instantly appealing to me. So I uh, took on that, started low down as the marketing assistant, worked my way up through the, the ranks, uh, bought that business um probably 12 years ago now for my folks uh sold it uh just before the pandemic so my last day was the 6th of december 2019 so um i've been called everything from an evil genius to stuff that's far less complimentary uh, by competitors <laughs> and, and friends in, in the industry still uh, uh because i spent quite a bit of time in spain my wife is spanish we spent a year living in, in madrid figuring out kind of my why what I wanted to do what I was doing in that industry if there was other challenges that I could face uh, and I figured I've done everything that I want to do in the language travel industry so I started looking more and more at the other business and I ended up buying that business off them as a good five years ago now um, and I've been building that up ever since so doing a lot more coaching doing and, and successful succession is now the latest part of that helping family businesses with strategy, with team development, with personality profiling and everything else that goes along with it, because that's my wheelhouse. I'm more suited for the entrepreneurial family business than I am for corporates. Hmm. So, so many different directions we could go, but the first thing that strikes me listening to your story is that you bought the businesses from your family or your parents. Yeah. And here I was thinking that, oh, family business, lovey-dovey, uh, parents pass the business on to the kids, but you bought the business. So is that a common misperception? Parents sell the businesses to the kids? No, I mean, you can do it either way and, and it happens either way. Usually it would be uh, some kind of sweat equity in theory. I mean, I, I wouldn't be a proponent of just handing over a business to kids who haven't um, earned their stripes to a certain extent. 
Um, now, look, I, I mean, I bought the business. I we we didn't go out to get market offers, and then I paid top dollar and was bidding out other people. Um, I mean, I got a, a fairly good deal that was done over tranches over time, but uh, it was also, I guess, it was important to to feel that I had skin in the game, that it was uh, something that I was going to be taking seriously, which I did take seriously, rather than just something that was my parents uh, put their blood, sweat, and tears into, and then they just handed it off to um the eldest to to play with so yeah okay so maybe now stepping back from you specifically and talking more generally when you get hired who hires you what are their problems and what do you do to walk them through the solution so typically it's the next generation um that are looking to to take over and either the folks are uh, they're in the same situation that my folks were in that they were a bit risk averse they don't really it's not that they don't trust the next generation. It's just that they have this fear of, of something going wrong. And look, let's be honest, the world is the world. Something is going to go wrong. Nobody knows how to predict the future. Anybody who was in an interview two years ago and was asked the question, where do you see yourself in two years time? Everybody got that question wrong. <laughs> so stuff is going to happen. And that's where uh, the patience part comes in on the, on the five P's and, and understanding that, look, we might remember the, the current generation might remember yeah, blood, sweat, and tears, but we made all the right moves at all the right times. It, it's not the case. I mean, it's it's rough and tumble and it's hustle and it's uh, rolling with the punches and getting that uh, uh, through to the, the current generation. So typically what I do is I do, um, I'll meet with all the generations who are involved, all the, the, the key players in the leadership that are involved, talk about where the, the roadblocks are, try to be as open, as honest as we possibly can be. Um, then... Typically, what we'll do is a personality report because some of the times uh, there are there are six broadly speaking six leadership styles that exist. This is all backed up by by Hogan assessments. These are we're the distributors for Hogan in Ireland, um, and where a lot of this can come in. If you have, let's say, the current generation, the founding father, for for want of a, a better for another descriptor, um, they are results leader and they are just at all costs get the business in, get the business in, because they had to scrimp, they had to save, and they had to scrape, and they had to hustle. The next generation might have grown up a little bit more involved in the fluffy side of the business, so they might be more of a people leader, they might be more of a marketeer, and how they're going to lead the business is different from how the current generation leads, and understanding those the strengths and where those can, can help each other, that's a really good place to start. Uh, then we'll look at the strategy, we'll look at the one-year strategy, so our 12 months, what's our map, our measurable action plan, uh, we'll look at if we want to, we can do uh, an, um, the ultimate future visioning idea. So where's the, the BHAG? What's the 30-year goal for the next generation leaders? Uh, we can do some team development. There's, there's lots of different things that we can do to help the company to, to grow over the next two to five years. Five years is what I would say is the maximum for any uh, prepare mode in, in successful succession planning. But uh, each, each family is different. Got it. So you're brought in, you uh, assess the leader. Uh, what are the personality situations you need to mm -hmm. get, the, get, you know, understand? And then how do you kind of help the group, the, the family, work through the decision about how to move forward? How do, how, do, you, do you have collaborative meetings? Do you have a workbook? Like, what's your yeah, process? So we, so we do, so we do work, we do um, collaborative meetings and we have open and honest conversations. So Part of the problem when you're talking about uh, family businesses, everybody has a view. And also everybody may, remembers what Aunt Mary said at Christmas two years ago. And everybody <laughs> remembers that there was a cousin that wasn't really good enough to be involved. I don't know any of that. I don't care about any of that. So I don't have any of the emotional baggage. So I can ask, ideally, I'll be told some of this stuff, but so I can ask those questions so as I can draw those elephants uh, out. To, mm -hmm. to have open and honest conversation. Go, okay, well, is this actually relevant for where we want to be in five years' time? No, mm -hmm. well, let's park it and look at just this bit and uh, keep keep the conversation flowing. So, it, th I mean, there is a there's a process with those five Ps and understanding how that works, but it's it's quite fluid in every family. Got it. Uh, are you also a financial engineer? Do you help them no. work through? No. Uh, so, how, how, how do you do that? So really, so for me, there's, there's, there's four different things you can do with a family business. One, when the founder, when the, the current generation 
size that they've had enough, you can stop. The business can stop. The second is you can sell. You can give the money to your kids, but go off, buy a yacht, sail around the world, whatever you want to do. The third, and unfortunately the most common, is survive, where the current generation will put a body in place, which is really just a prolonged stop, and it's a painful stop. The fourth then is scale. Scale is where I'm, what I'm interested in. I'm helping people to understand how they can get the right people in the right place to actually build it up. Country to country, tax issues, legal issues, there, there are plenty of firms that can help you with local ideas. That's, that's not my forte. That's not my background. We hired um, financial advisors when we did the whole thing, uh, and they know that inside and out. Uh, what I'm interested in is the people side of it and growing the business and st strategic planning of the business. Okay, sounds great. And it sounds like you work in many countries. Is that right? You, 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 you yeah, I've been, um, a... yeah, um, because people are people. So uh, I had a call with the potential somebody in, in South Africa. I uh, was in Tanzania recently. I've worked with Irish companies. I've uh, done some consulting with people in the US. Um, looking to go out to the Middle East before the summer for, for another event. So yeah, look, uh, people are people. Uh, and this is, this is why what I bring to the table really is my experience of working in a family business and understanding people, the financial side of it, the legal side of it, that can be hashed out at a local level. How, uh, how big are most of your clients? How big are these businesses? Uh, it varies. It tends to be really, it tends to be upwards of about the 650 to a million dollar mark is where people would start. Otherwise they might think, oh, we can kind of muddle through this on our own and we can figure it out, which is, I mean, the majority of businesses don't reach the million euro million dollar mark. Um, but that kind of somewhere between 750 and kind of five to 10 million, that's where, uh, I'd probably be. Uh, most impactful. Uh, we're going to take a very quick break. We'll be right back with more from Stephen Short. Hello, fellow podcast lovers. Danielle Hayden here. I wanted to kindly interrupt your time to personally invite you to pop over to kickstartaccountinginc.com slash getting started to book a strategy call with your Kickstart Accounting team. If you're working to release money blocks so that you can step into your power and purpose, then this is the right place for you. We're all here waiting to help you to get organized and understand the impact that having regular financial statements will have on your money mindset. The Kickstart team is here eagerly waiting to help empower you. Don't delay, take action right away and start to build momentum. Kickstartaccountinginc.com slash getting started. And we're back with Stephen Short, really interesting conversation about succession planning within family businesses and uh, all the different things that can go right and wrong and how Stephen helps them out. So Stephen, you've worked with many outside groups. Uh, I noticed your website talks about Startup Grind, Global Entrepreneurship Network, Disney Plus, KPMG. Um, what, what's your role when you're working with these larger groups? Is it the same or, or is it a different kind of uh, role you play? So it's when I'm when I'm doing the succession planning for the for some of the bigger companies, and we've done some stuff with with bigger corporate companies uh, here in Ireland mostly. Uh, it tends to be more about the pick and selecting the right person. So they will have their internal plan of what they want, whether they want a project or whether they want to, they, they're hiring a new CFO or they're hiring a, a new CEO. And we will do a full personality workup on these people to be able to give them look based on what you're saying you want this person is the closest, this person is the next closest, this person is the next closest. Here are the questions that you should be asking them. Here are the things to dive into. This is where they might have been uh, a little bit over left on one scale that we were looking at or another scale to give them a, an opportunity, obviously, to talk about it. Uh, but for the corporate side of things, it's less about the strategy because they would have this huge overarching strategy for the whole company. We'd be helping them with the pick side of things and, and hire and we also do um, high potentials, so uh, identifying high potentials within organizations. Okay, so those are really kind of HR type roles, or you know, succession planning roles within a corporate environments where you don't have the dynamics of the family business, but you still have the dynamics of 
what's the succession planning look like? Exactly. Yeah. And, and who, who are the next lead, who are the next generation leaders who are going to lead us and who are the mindset for corporate as opposed to uh, smaller entrepreneurial companies? Yeah. Very interesting. And, and is that easier for you to do or harder for you to do? I, I, it's different, um, right? It's, I don't know about easier or harder. I mean, it's a, it's a different dynamic. Um, it's probably, I, I would probably be less involved uh, because it's a bit more we're brought in for one part of it as opposed to helping somebody to grow over a couple of years. It'll be the same HR managers that we deal with. And then when they're bringing in their new cohorts a year later, we do uh, selecting graduates for, for law firms or something that just whittling it down to help them to understand those. So we'd see the same people, we'd have the same relationships, but it's we don't. I wouldn't feel that we'd have the same impact as we have helping with the strategy and the team building in, in smaller businesses. Got it. Um, I'm curious, uh, you're in Dublin today. Uh, I guess you, you spend a good bit of your time there or you mentioned you're in Spain sometimes. Do you usually travel around the world going to the client sites or do you do a lot of this by Zoom or is it a mix? So a lot of it's by Zoom um, because, well, for the last two years, everything yeah. is by Zoom. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it's by Zoom. Uh, I try, if at all possible, put them in. To, to get me out to Arizona for two days um, to sit down face to face, I'm jet lagged. Everyone is in, uh, in a rush. We've got two days and the flights and the time and everything else, it works out to be really expensive. Um, what I'm looking to do is kind of have uh, a couple of places where I might be able to say, okay, well, I have three or four clients there so I can spend two weeks, uh, spend some time in between, do the workshops, do the strategy workshops, do the team building stuff. Um, and then come back. Um, but we, I'm actually, I'm just putting together uh, an next entrepreneur academy uh, for the next for next generation leaders, and that will be a, a Zoom uh, once a week uh, workshops for uh, on a number of different topics to help next generation leaders get ready to to take over the business. Got it. And just turning to your personal side a little bit, is your current business is this a family business or it's just you and you know, do you have family members participating yourself? So my folks are still um, semi-involved. Um, we are, uh, we actually, uh, after this whole thing of, of just panicking, or not panicking, uh, worrying about having to leave the family business because we wouldn't be able to stand each other, uh, <laughs> we worked out a huge amount of stuff. We actually sold, my wife and I and my family, we sold our house. We renovated my family home. Now my parents live downstairs in a wheelchair accessible uh, on the ground floor. Uh, and we live upstairs, two, two living rooms, two bedrooms, like separate bedrooms, kitchens, everything else, but fully interconnected. So um, they're still involved. They're still involved on a, on a personal level and in a, in a business level, more on the board side of things. Uh, my kids are a little bit young, uh, mm -hmm. although my, my eldest daughter is saying that she wants to study psychology. So obviously there's a there's a lot of stuff that can be done with our psychometrics business and, and things like that. But um, it, uh, my view is you can't pressure kids into, into joining. It's going to be a, a nightmare. Um, mm -hmm. You've just got to, the same as you've got to convince anybody to come and join your business, you've got to show them the, the good sides of the business and find out where they're going to thrive uh, and really um, excel within the organization. Yeah, got it. Makes sense. Well, um, this has been great. I, I did want to ask you, uh, how should people get in touch with you? I noticed on your website, you said uh, they can contact you for 30 minute chat. What should they expect uh, to do in that 30 minute chat? So it's really just getting to know, like if I can give some little pointers that'll help you on your way, then brilliant. A uh, uh, little bit of advice or even just a, a different perspective on the problem you're having, more than happy to do it. If it's something that people want to continue on to do some of the workshops, to do some of the, the sessions, also obviously more than happy to, to continue having those conversations. Okay. But no obligation, no hard sell. Uh, mm -hmm. Really what I want is for people to, to be successful in their family businesses. Okay. And that website that they should visit is? SuccessfulSuccession.com. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, Stephen, this has been great. Uh, thanks so much for stopping by and sharing this uh, fantastic information with us. Hopefully you'll get a couple of people interested as a result of, of this podcast. So thanks again. Cool. Thank you very much, Gordon. Pleasure talking to you. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please tell a friend or colleague to subscribe and please leave us a five-star review. We'd really appreciate it. 
Until next time, make it a great week.